You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County, Monday through Wednesday at 10 a.m. and Thursday at 11 a.m. Southern living at its best. Good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around the world listen to the sound of my voice. It is a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. 69 degrees going to a high of 81. So we're going to have a pretty decent day. No rain. Thank God. Thank God. No rain. So beautiful, beautiful. 81 is nice. Let me tell you something. I wish it could stay 81 like all year round. Like it doesn't happen. 81 in the daytime, you know, 70 at night, 69 at night, 65. I love it. I love it. Anyway, it's a great day. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. I did. I did a you know, there's a show that come on called Restaurant on the Edge. Restaurants on the Edge. And it's a show that takes you around the world to these amazing restaurants who are in trouble though they need some help and so sundays is my day to kind of just relax and fall back and so i binge yesterday on restaurants on the edge because i it's so for one for one reason i binge because one it gave me the opportunity to go to some exotic place without actually having to go there especially since i've been sheltered in for like three months that's what it feels like it feels like it's been about three months what's this june oh yeah March. So it's been about three months, but it gave me the opportunity to kind of escape. Like I'm a Pisces. We like to escape, right? That's just who we are. And so it gave me the opportunity to escape to these beautiful places around the world. They were in Finland yesterday. They were in Canada a couple of times. They were in, um, where were they at? Turco something. It was beautiful. That's all I can say. It was, it was beautiful. So I enjoyed it. So listen, today is Monday. So you know what today is. Is Georgia with us today. She's going to give us our word for the week. So good morning, G. Welcome. Yeah, how about you? What did you do this weekend? Did you have a good one? Uh, yeah, I've been too. I went and checked out some um, some shows on Netflix. There was a movie called Book Club. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, I think Jane Fonda, a couple of older women in it, but it's a really good. It's a really good movie. I think it was you know very lighthearted. And so yeah, so it was nice. I didn't do too much else today. I mean that, that, this, this weekend. So, but it was good. Trying to stay away from all the stuff that's happening. Otherwise, <sighs> I know it's so depressing. <laughs> I tell you, I just oh. I ain't even. I, I got to talk about it on the news, so I'm not gonna talk about it now. I'm gonna let you go ahead and give us our word for the week, so we can be inspired. By the time I bring you down in the next couple of segments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all heard it right here from the word sharer herself, Georgia Teller. She's our word sharer, y'all. We it's like the, it's like the she could be like the word whisperer. You know what I'm saying? Like the word whisperer. She gives us our word for the for the week. So it's important for us to utilize that word because it's important that we tell things that are important. Okay, I'm just I'm messing them up. 
I'm messing it up right now. I ain't gonna, I'm gonna stop right there while I'm ahead because I'm messing it up. All right, so y'all, let's get on to some uh, news you can use. Thank you, Georgia, for the word of the week. You can stick around if you like. We'd love to have you if you want to. I know you got some plans for later, but if you want to stick around, you can. Yes, I do. So yeah, I'm going to head out. So thank you so much, though. Thank you, everybody. All right, talk to you next Monday. Okay. All right, bye. All right, people, today is National Hazelnut Cake Day. Oh, National Hazelnut Cake Day. That sounds delicious. I don't even know what that sounds. That sounds great, y'all. But, and listen, I'm not telling you to go and eat a whole bunch of hazelnut cake. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you that today is National Hazelnut C Cake Day. So if you like hazelnut cake, you might want to you know, get you a slice. Listen, don't go overboard because, you know, you got to walk it off. I mean, let me tell you all what I've been doing because I had, I had to figure out a plan because I had gained some weight while I've been sheltered in. I was like, oh, yeah, this is not because I told you guys I lost a lot of weight last year and the year before last I lost 120 pounds, I think it was, about 120. But I gained back like 15 of those pounds being sheltered in. And you wouldn't think that I, I did, but well, sitting home and, you know, with the family and everybody want to cook and you want to taste this and taste that. And I was like, yeah, this is not going to happen. Like, I got to I got to figure out how to change this thing right here. So what happened was I was looking at, um, I don't know, I was looking at, I was looking at a video online and Dr. Ian Smith was on there. And he was talking about intimate intimate uh fasting and i was like what is that so i watched the video and what he said was like there's a there's an hour it did some time in the day where you burn more energy like you fast a certain amount of time and you burn then you eat a certain amount of time so what happened was i realized that when i wake up in the morning i have this routine that i do right i got a routine that i do before i come out and, and set up for the show so i set up for the show from nine to ten get everything together. And then from 10 to 11, sometimes 11, 15, I, I do the show, but I won't eat anything. First, I used to think that was a bad thing. But now because I'm doing this intermittent fasting, it's like, okay, I'm liking how this is working for me. So I was like, let me try that and see if that works. It is actually working. So I did a full week last week. I dropped seven pounds. Yeah, it sounds crazy, right? But I did. And so I get on the scale this morning, like, holy crap, Ola. So I, my goal, to get to my goal weight, I have to lose 33 more pounds. So I believe that with, and you know, people look at me and say, nah, you don't, my family, not people, because everybody else probably thinks she's still, she's still fat, you know, but for my family who have, you know, who have seen, who seem like where I've come from, they feel like I'm good, right? Me personally, I feel like I got 33 more pounds to drop, right? And so I've been doing intimate fasting and it's really easy for me because, you know, I don't eat breakfast anyway. I, well, I used to eat breakfast. Because I would get up, I would get up and try to eat a little bit of something. But now I just say, you know what? I'm gonna get up, do my routine, and then after I after I finish the show, I'll eat, which is great because then I I try not to eat past nine o'clock. Now I gotta tell you, I knew I had a couple of bad eating habits. One of them, and I'm gonna get on with the horoscope for me, but I just gotta tell y'all about this. I knew I had a couple of bad eating habits. I was not a carb eater. That wasn't my thing. Breads and sweets, that wasn't my thing. Salad dressings, cheese and butter, that was my thing. So I used to think that my weight gain was attributed to me eating a lot of salad dressing, cheese, and butter, right? Because that's what I would eat a lot of. Cheese on everything. That was me. I love cheese. All kinds of cheese. I love cheese. But what I realized is that I'm a night eater, right? And so I didn't... So what happened is, like, at nighttime, I would go to bed. I was supposed to go to bed, like, 10, 11 o'clock. But what would happen is I would... I would find myself, if I read something or if I watched a really good, powerful, motivational video, then I'm like starving. It was crazy, crazy things. Then I'm like, you know, I'm going to run in here. I'm going to make me a grilled cheese. Now, it's like 11 o'clock at night. And then I go to sleep. And I found that I was doing it on a regular basis. Eating some eating, eating some potato chips or I would go, I, I was quick to make grilled cheese. Like that was my go-to. And I realized, okay, this is really your real problem. It wasn't even about the butter and the cheese throughout the day. It was really about me going to sleep at 11, uh, waking up at, a, um, staying up to 11 o'clock and then eating and then stand, that's and not getting enough sleep. You know, some kind of stressed out about something in the business most of the time and then eating like past 11 o'clock. So past nine o'clock. So when you, when I started to learn all these things, now let me tell you, it is a struggle. When I tell you it's a struggle for me not to eat at night past nine o'clock, that is my biggest struggle of all. Because what happens is the house gets really quiet because everybody's asleep. 
then I can think really clear. Then I get really inspired. But then it's time for me to go to bed. So, but but I'm so inspired now. I want to eat something, right? And it's like crazy. So what I did was I said, okay, when I get into them really really, well, I just gotta have some. And it's a mental thing. It's not even that I'm hungry. I think it's just a mental thing because I can eat anything and be fine. It's just that I was choosing to eat a grilled cheese. So when I went to the to the farmer's market, I bought a ton of fruit. I bought plums. I bought pomegranates. I bought mangoes. I bought um, peaches and and dates dried dates i was like okay this is if i have to if i can't go to sleep just yet and i have to eat something it's gonna be one of these things right here and so the first time the first night i ate some dried dates which was fine so i said all that to say i'm doing the intimate fasting so if you are struggling right now because you put on you know like the the uh, pandemic 15 i'm gonna call it the pandemic 15 you put on the pandemic 15 like i did you might want to try intimate fasting. It's it's pretty cool for me, like because I can I can miss the morning and go right into lunch or brunch after I finish the show, and then I'm good throughout the day. It's my night eating that I had to really get a control over, and so because of that, I've dropped 15 pounds. All right, so let's get on with your horoscopes. Brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen for today, Monday, June the first. It is June, y'all. We're halfway through the year already, already. So we're going to kick it off like we always do, and that is with Aries. Aries, you will impress new friends and acquaintances with your intellectual wit. You will be your usual charming self, and the partners you attract may be adventurous, the adventurous type. Discuss your objective with your peers or lovers. Okay, listen, you're going to, you, listen, listen, Aries, you're going to attract some people that's adventurous. Mm-hmm. And people are going to love your intellectual wit today. It's all about you today, baby, all about you. Taurus, sudden romantic infatuations could lead to a significant, prosperous connection. You're in need of love. Try to curb your habits or you could find yourself in an awkward financial position. Listen, watch the coins today, Taurus. If you don't want to be in an awkward financial position, watch your money. Watch them. Don't let the money rule you. You rule the money. Gemini, don't let someone you work with put words in your mouth. The battle continues. You will learn valuable information if you travel today. Travel today, but be safe. All right, Gemini, do what you got to do because you need that information to move whatever you're trying to move to the next phase, but be safe. That's all I'm saying. Cancer, don't let your family put demands on you. You will feel compelled to do some traveling. Don't confide in anyone for the time being. Cancer, if you're traveling today, be safe. And for right now, keep your business to yourself. Just not today. Don't confide in anybody. Just relax to keep it to yourself. Sometimes you need to talk. Today is not the day to share your business with anyone. All right. uh, Leo, older family members may try to make demands that are impossible for you to handle. You will communicate easily and should be able to develop new friendships if they're too demanding. Reconsider this union. Listen here. If anybody's putting some high demands on you today, Leo, fall back. You tell them to fall back and you fall back. Because that union rate, that union right there is probably not going to be a good one for you. I'm just saying. You know, don't watch the red flags. Sometimes we sometimes we see the flag go up and we kind of ignore it. If you see the red flag today, Leo, watch it. That's a sign. If they're putting it, they're too demanding, that's a sign. That's not going to change is who they are. Don't think that you love them so much you're going to change them. They love you, just not going to happen. Virgo, you are best not to discuss your personal life with others. You will find that valuable knowledge can be gained if you're willing to listen. You may have difficulties with someone close to you. All right, listen here. Listen, Virgo, you got to listen, right? If you want this valuable knowledge, you got to be able to listen. Sometimes you just want to talk, talk, talk. Sometimes you got to shut it down and listen. I went for a job interview one time at Comcast and I did, they did a phone interview first. And so the guy asked me on the phone, he said, what's the most powerful skill you think you need for this job? I said, to be a good listener. He was shocked. He said, you're absolutely right. You're the only person that has ever said that. And I'm like, really? He was like, yeah, I was shocked when he said it. Cause I'm thinking, well, isn't that like what you need to be a good customer service rep? You got to listen. He was like, I was the only one. All right, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this one to give you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Nota Astrology, Micah Thyssen. You're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. Stay tuned. Spending my 
Show it's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer, Michael Thiessen. We're going to pick it up with Libra. Love relationships will flourish. Mm-hmm. Tone down to put some of that hard-earned cash into a safe, long-term investment. Outdoor sports events should entice you. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Libra. Put it into a long-term investment, but make sure you understand the investment that you're putting your money into. So, you want to consult a professional for that. Um... A long-term investment does not mean just your bank account. You can invest in some other things, but you want to make sure if you don't understand that whole thing, you want to consult a professional. Someone you can trust, someone that came highly referred to you. Just don't go out and get any professional because you can't trust everybody. Some, sometimes you can't even trust the people you refer to. However, if you know somebody that you trust and they trust somebody who's done some good things for them, yeah, that's who you want to kind of talk to. Scorpio. Reevaluate your position and make decisions about your future goals. Trips should be your choice. Self-deception about relationship is a problem. Listen here. Listen, Scorpio. Here's the thing. If you see the red flag, there's a problem. Don't close your eyes. Don't put on your blinders because you want the work so bad, you know, that you're going to do anything you can, but you, you overlook the red flags. You're self-deceiving yourself. You know, if the relationship is not working, it's not working. Stop stop pretending that it is because that person is not going to change. You're trying to make something happen that's not supposed to happen. That's not God plan for you. Just know that. So you're deceiving your own self. Shame on you. Now, I'm telling you and Michael is telling you, don't do that. Trust me. If that, that may not be the thing for you, something better may come along. Yeah, I'm just saying. 
Sagittarius, you can make money through your real estate or by using your head when it comes to personal investments. Your attitude is changing rapidly and your plate is overloaded. Travel will be, uh, will initiate new friendships or love connections. Okay. All right, Sad. You may need to take a trip, baby, to find some love. You hear me? But listen, be safe. I don't know. It's kind of freaky right now because I don't even know. Like, you got to fly somewhere. I don't know. I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm going out today and have lunch at a place, at a location. I'm I'm, I'm getting, I'm freaking out. But this, this place has an outside kind of thing. So, you can go sit outside. So, you know. Because I'm still a little bit freaked out, but I'm getting there. And we're getting there. So listen, Sag, you may travel. Go ahead, because you may initiate a new friendship or a love connection. One. One or the other. Just be careful. Be careful. Capricorn, you may enjoy doing something musical for entertainment. Socialize with friends, but don't overspend on lavish entertainment. You may jump from the frying pan into the fire if you make a move today. Woo-wee. You know that grease is hot, but that fire is hotter. And then you're gonna jump out the grease into the fire. You're gonna you're gonna catch you're gonna burn up. So you just need to be careful today, Capricorn, because you're gonna jump out the frying pan into the fire. You're gonna have grease on you already. You're gonna burn up. Be careful. Yeah. Watch the moves you make today, because they could they could burn you up. Aquarius, you can expect to face opposition on the home front. Cultural activities open your eyes to new ways of doing things. Time spent with family, children, or good friends will be re- regenerating and positive. Yes. Spend some time with your family and friends. I know we've been, I know a lot of us have been spending a lot of time with our families. Like I just like I just need to get away. Yeah, this week I'm out, y'all. I'll be I'll probably be doing the show on location because I'm going away for the week for my anniversary. I'm excited about that. Yes, I am. Yep, I'm going to a place. I'm getting there. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting there. Now I'm a little bit freaked out, and I'll tell you why. Um, and I was getting to I was getting to a good place, but after this weekend, I'm a, I'm I'm trying not to freak out as much. All right, and I'll tell you why in a minute. All right, my fellow fish Pisces. Oh, here we go. It's all listen, this whole week right here, this whole day, but almost all of us is about travel. So here we are, Pisces. Travel will lead you in new directions. What did I just say? Don't let the mood of those you live with get you down. You can get into weight loss programs or go out and change your image with the new look in clothing, hairstyle, or attitude. That's all me. All that right there is me. I ain't letting my family move, getting family people get me in, get, let me down, get me down. Don't let the moods of those you live with get Not going to do that. I'm going to avoid them. They got to move today. I'm out. Weight, pro, weight loss programs, I'm doing the intimate fasting, all right, but I need to go out and get some new, I need I need a couple new outfits for my trip. Yeah, not doing anything to the hair. My daughter got me with some crochet braids. I love them because I just get up and go. Yep, so I'm not doing anything. Attitude, always good. Attitude is always good. All right, so listen, guys, this is all the horoscopes I got for today. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. to give you more of the horoscopes. Brought to you by Notre Astrologer Micah Thyssen. And now let's get on to some news you can use. So, you know, I haven't been doing a whole lot of announcement about um, the, the numbers here in Georgia and in, in around the county. Because I just, like, I just, I couldn't rehash that every day. Like, I was, I was talking about it every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. I could not rehash it. I just, I got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. Like, I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this every day. I don't want to talk about this every day. You know, I'm telling people to stay safe. That's what you have to do. You know, I've gone out and I've seen people who are not practicing any type of safety. But that's probably with anything. Like, they just throw their lives to the wind. We're going to throw caution to the wind and whatever happened, happened. That's them. And so, that's how they choose to live and that's how they choose to live. I, on the other hand, choose not to live that way. And I try to tell my, my daughter and my niece, my nephews and the rest of my family and friends, you know, my niece, my, everybody, my husband, everybody, don't go. If you go out the house, put your mask on. That's all I'm saying. Now, let's go to some case, some numbers. So, right here in the state of Georgia, according to the Georgia Public Health Department, um, we have confirmed 47,496 cases of the coronavirus in the state of Georgia. And this is pretty much all I'm going to say about until next Monday, God willing. 47,496 cases. 2,055 people have passed away from this virus. Yep. Yep. 2,055 people have passed away. And, and so, and I'm, I'm expecting that number to rise because all of the activities right now, now I'm going to give you our number here in Gwinnett County because we need to know 
where we are. So right now, Gwinnett County has 3,792 confirmed cases and 128 people have passed away. Yep, that's where we are. Of course, Fulton County is, is over top of us with, you know, 235 cases. But that's all I'm talking about on that. Be safe. It's not gone yet. And she's still out there roaming around. So if y'all think she isn't, she is. She's still out there roaming. Corona. Yeah, we call her. I feel, I feel like she's like the, the like one of the Delpers children. Yeah. So, listen. Duluth has said, you know what? We got it. We got it. Yeah. People want to dine in. Let's help them out. So Duluth has temporarily installed three dine-in tents in the downtown area to allow the public to visit local restaurants while maintaining social distancing. See, I like that. I can see that. Two of the tents are in the town green and one is in Parsons Alley. So you can still go out there and kind of enjoy yourself. You got to stay far apart. That's what the way where I'm going today, they have table. They already had tables outside. Now that we can kind of like be like over in a corner, we ain't got to be close to anybody except for the person you're dining with. Um, so that's a good thing. Each tent contains picnic and high top tables available on the first come first serve basis. No organized events or partners may take place. Guests are encouraged to support the support Duluth restaurants by bringing their takeout to their tents to enjoy while being protected from the elements. Um, tables will be spaced appropriately and should be sanitized before and after use. All right, so listen, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you got to, now I, I got to tell y'all, I'm, I'm still not, I'm still not really good on the public bathroom yet. So I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm not there yet. But anyway, Duluth is saying, you know what? We got to, we got to help our restaurants. And I get it because restaurants, ooh, can you, because think about this for a second, right? Restaurants have, they have a lot of overhead. And so the, the, the fact that they're not bringing in the type of business they used to, I'm sure they're pretty much suffering if they're, if they're, you know, they didn't have like reserves set up. Now, some restaurants probably had reserves set up because they do so well, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's probably kind of tough. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I applaud everybody who's trying to, trying to help us get back to some sort of normal. We don't, I don't think we'll ever be normal ever. Like, because I, something else is going to come up, you know, think about this for a minute. First, long time ago, it was about, about five years ago, I think it was like 2013, we had SARS, right? So SARS is just a, is a, just a, a, a different version. Corona is just a different version of SARS. Like, everybody was freaking out about SARS. And so we had SARS, we made it through that. Now, now we got Corona, which is much worse, much worse. You know, so I don't know. We just got to, we got to keep, we got, you got to know that, you got to know that we're not going to, go back to normal. It just won't happen. Not, not, not there. It won't happen. All right, listen, I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after the sun to give you more of the rundown of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. You're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. Stay tuned. Sunlight that always stays Dinner by the waterway It's that sweet life Raise your cross Made some do crack a smile He asked if I could stay a while I'm living that high life Time to catch a flight but you can make me go Unlocking all the memories of my new home Ventilated echoes playing to and fro To and fro, back and forth, yeah Caught some kids dancing in the alleyway Crazy how the melodies began to play, yeah Home. Now I never wanna go home. 
I brought a girl on my best friend. She said I already told ya, yeah, yeah. I never dated a black guy. I said you brown yourself. Let me offer help. Come on inside. Well, everybody knows your name. Everybody knows your name. Time to catch a flight, but you can make me go. Unlocking all the memories of my new home. Ventilated echoes playing to and fro. Back and forth, yeah Caught some kids dancing in the alleyway Crazy how the melodies began to play, yeah Tell me how you feel it when you hear the lyric, yeah My heart's in Welcome back, welcome back, y'all. Listen, um, we may have a curfew tonight at 9 o'clock. So there were some protests this weekend, well, yesterday. There were some protests uh, yesterday, um, two protests that took place yesterday. One went well, you know, no, no kind of incidents, but the second one, not so, not so much. Five people were arrested at that one. I think it was even, I think I heard 12 this morning, but people were arrested from the second protest. And so there are five scheduled today at different places around Gwinnett County, especially here in Lawrenceville. And so, you know, our city manager, Chuck Warbington is saying, you know what, we're going to have a curfew tonight at nine o'clock because we don't want it to get out of hand. Listen, this here's my thing. My heart goes out to George Floyd's family. It really does. I mean, we know that police brutality is it hasn't it hasn't changed y'all it's, it's still here and so i think those guys should be given a death penalty every one of them the ones that stood there and watch them die i think they should be given a death penalty like i don't think they should get off with a slap on the wrist you know third degree manslaughter whatever they call trying to call it i think they should get i think they should get the death sentence that's what i believe because that was straight up murder whether he had an underlying issue or not he was he was fine before they took him out of the car and put in man and he sit there and so he had on handcuffs. He wasn't doing anything. Why didn't you just put him in the car? Right? Important. Georgia talked about the word of day important. It's important how you do things. So I think that all of those guys that sit there and watch him die, I think they should get the I should I think they should get the death penalty. Now, are we pissed off, mad as hell? Yes, we are. Right? But here's my thought. You have to live in these places. Right? You have to shop at these places. Why do you want to tear them up? I don't get that part. I get the protest, but here's my here's my other thought. We could protest. We always protest. We protest, we protest, and nothing really happens. It's enough people that can come together, put some money together, get the people out the chairs, 
who don't care about us when it's time to vote. Put your money, put your, put, vote. That's important. Get the ones who don't care about what we stand for, vote them out. But that's not what we do. We won't come out to vote, but we come out to protest and tear shit up. I'm sorry. I know this is a family show, but I'm just saying, I understand. I, I, and I grieve, but you have to live in these places. So why do you want to tear them up? Then you got to go back and say, okay, now where am I going to go to shop at? Cause you done tore it all up. I get it. I understand. I've seen history. I know they burnt down black wall street. I understand all that. Right. I get that. But I also listened to what Dr. Martin Luther King said about peaceful protesting. He wasn't tearing up stuff and they were, they were beating them down in the street. So I understand. I, I just, I just, and it, it's like a catch 22, right? Like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. It, it's it's terrible. We have evil people in this world. We do. A lot of them, right? But we have more good people than that. And I think if all the good people got together and put good energy out in the world, not tear up stuff. I, I could, it was a video going around yesterday from Chicago. And what I couldn't understand was, was why the police never showed up. The video streamed for two hours. I didn't watch it. For two, I think I watched it about two minutes because I couldn't watch it. They were like tearing up a Bank of America. Like, I mean, trying to, I mean, they, they beat that Mac machine, the ATM down until they got the money out. And people just stood around and watched. Now, here's the thing. What if the police would have came and just started shooting folks? We'll be right back where we were today protesting because that was, that was senseless for them to do that. Right? So, you have to think about your actions. You have... Now, some people just evil at the core. I seen a guy, he was... He was in a date that he was a police officer. He could not wait to shoot somebody. You could tell he was bouncing around with his gun. He... Evil at the core. Like, that he lived... Put him in... Send him to war. You want to shoot and kill folks? Put him... Send him to war. You want... that? You shouldn't have signed up for the police department. You should have signed up for the military... Where that's your job to go out and find the bad guys and shoot and kill them. Don't join the police force. Be a real man. Be you know, Join the military. Not saying the police officers aren't real men because that's not what I'm saying. But you want to just kill folks just to be killing them? Send them to the military. And I'm not saying the military just kill folks to be killing them. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you start just killing people because of the color of their skins, something is wrong with you. You're evil. Now, there was a... There was a... There was a woman in a park in central park she was walking her dog and this man started filming her and she said stop filming me now then she said i'm gonna call the cops and i'm gonna say it's an african-american man threatening me all right now she was wrong for that because that wasn't the case but here's my thing why was he filming her like why was he about what why you understand what i'm saying why were you doing that Because if I'm in the park and some strange man is filming me, I'm going to call the police. I don't care what color you are. And she probably would have did this. Here's the thing. She knew to use the word African American because she knew I was going to cause some trouble. Maybe she was trying to put fear in his heart because she didn't know what the heck was going on. He's standing. Why were you filming her? You understand what I'm saying? She wasn't bothering you. She was minding her business. And then everybody want to float it around that this woman called why was he filming her? Did anybody ask that question? Because that's the question I asked. Like, why were you filming the woman? Like, she said, stop filming me. What he, he shouldn't have been filming her in the first place. And then he should have left her alone. But instead, you stand there and you keep filming her. What, to piss her off? That's like, I would feel threatened in that situation. Hell, I would have called the police. And I'm a black woman. If I saw some man, I'm in there minding my business. He walking around filming me. What am I supposed to think? I don't know what to think. So I thought that was crazy. Anyway, you know, no disrespect to the military, no disrespect to the police officers who do good. You know, the ones who do bad, your day shall come. Um, because I know without the military, that our police officers, we'll be worse off than we are right now. And I got off on a tangent because, you know, things are going on. I can't see me tearing up where I live because I have to live there. I get the protest. I understand why we protest. I, I agree it and I agree with it. What I don't agree with is the destroying of properties. What I don't agree with is the destroying of small businesses who had nothing to do with that stuff. I'm a small business owner. I can't imagine having a storefront and somebody just breaking out all my windows and taking all my stuff. Do you understand how crazy that is? And then you have to live in these communities. I don't, I don't, that I don't get. 
I mean, I understand why you think that it's okay to do that, but I wouldn't do that. And that's just me. That's just me, you know. And I'm sure I get some feedback and some some kick in my back because of that, you know. Um, But that's just me. So, anyway, we may have a 9 o'clock curfew tonight because there are more protests scheduled for Lawrenceville today. And so, they don't know how it's going to go, and I understand that as well. So, just know that if you're outside past 9 o'clock, you better have a good reason that you're probably going to go to jail. So if you don't li- don't heed these warnings, just know that, you know, it's chances are if you don't have a good reason for being outside, you can't show that you're coming from work or the hospital or wherever you're coming from and you're outside on the street at 9 o'clock, chances are you're going to get a citation and you might even go to jail. So go in the house, do what the people tell you to do so you don't put yourself in a situation that's going to cause you any kind of hardship. Didn't mean to get off on a tangent, but I'm just, this, these things just... They annoy me, and so, you know, and don't, if I, please, please, if I offended anybody in our law enforcement military, it was not my intention. It's just that I, these people who are so bad, they're so bad, and they just want, they have hate in their heart, and they just want to kill people and harm people. It's crazy. They don't need to be, they need to be locked up. All right, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this song to give you more of the rundown of what's going on in around Gwinnett County. Stay tuned. I think I'd try this a new way I'm gonna show you the tricks that I know I'm getting tired of talking And I need more of a show right now It's time that you made your mind up Cause lately all it ever does is change Feels like we're only talking, talking Going round and around, back around I will fight like no other watch funny marco funny marco is hilarious y'all he is a he's this guy he oh my god so i'm sitting here crying because i needed a laugh after that whole segment i just did but funny marco is hilarious so he goes into like stories and he do all kind of crazy stuff like now he's at walmart messing with people he's taking the demand bread out his cart and he's like that's my bread. he's hilarious so y'all need to laugh look at funny marco i'm, su- I'm surprised somebody punch him in the mouth though because he be doing stuff like crazy. Like he he acted like a blind man one day, and I was crying because he was talking on the telephone. He had like the walking cane, the the um, walking stick in his hand, and he was hitting people. That thing tickled me. He is funny. I needed a laugh, so I watched Bernie Marco. You gotta watch him. Go to Facebook. He on Facebook irritating people um, at at stores. Like he's at the one I just watched. He's at Walmart. And, he messed with these it's like a bunch of old women so he oh he's funny so you need a laugh that's a good laugh for you 
All right, let's keep it moving. Gwinnett County Commissioners this week asked leaders to weigh in on proposed transit project as they considered whether to hold a transit referendum in November. Representatives of the 15, um, representatives of 15 of the county's 16 cities responded in person or via video feeds Thursday to ask questions and offer feedback about the county's proposal, which includes 99 possible project options to choose from. That is a lot. Of, that is a lot to choose from. While there was more support for the project than not, um, the most vocal representative, representatives were those who wanted less transit. Okay. So uh, Snellville Mayor Barbara Bender said she and her council supported a plan that would not extend heavy rail into the county. Commissioners are considering whether to extend Martyr's Gold Line to the planned transit hub at Jimmy Carter Boulevard or spend that money on additional bus routes. As cities uh, continue to build up their downtown areas, Bender said bus transportation, bus-based transportation offers more flexibility. She also said she was in favor of uh, more microtransit. So, you know, Snellville did a microtransit program last year, and they said it went really well. Um, I could see that working. And I also heard, you know, Grayson Mayor was like, uh, no, thank you. We don't want any kind of transit other than Grayson. So Grayson is like totally like, yeah. Mayor Allison Wilkerson said residents wouldn't object to would uh <laughs> would object to no transit expansion. So yeah, they don't want it. She was like, we don't want it in Grayson. Mm-hmm. They 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 don't want it. So to read more about this story, you can go to uh, AJC.com to read more about this story. Cause you know some people want to keep the small town feel. They want to keep that you know I feel at home kind of thing. And so um you know I mean that could run either way. I, right now I'm just too I'm just too. Ugh. I can't even think about a whole lot of stuff right now. Like, that's why I just kind of been binging on Sundays on TV. I know. I should be really doing business right now on Sunday. All right. So, the Commuter Express bus service from, from Gwinnett County to Atlanta will begin um, today after being halted in April in response to the coronavirus pandemic. The Gwinnett Transit service will operate in the reduced schedule. The number of riders will be limited to 14, and all riders are encouraged to wear face masks. So, the bus route is going to start back up going to Atlanta. But they only going to have 14 people on the bus at one time, and they are encouraged to wear face masks. You know, there was a bus driver who passed away because a guy got on early on and coughed on him and gave him the virus. He died. So, listen, think about somebody's life, okay? That's another thing. I ain't going to even get back on that stuff. I just I just watched Funny Marco. Let me stay in the Funny Marco mood. I ain't going to do it. Hang on. Anyway, the five routes that the county will operate uh, will be Route 101, Route 102, Route 103, Route 103A, and Route uh, 110, which serves Emory University and the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. Um, yeah, so, which serves university. Okay. So now, you know, you can ride the bus. If you get on the bus, think about the people that you, you know, you're gonna you're gonna come in contact. Put your mask on. It's not hard to put the mask on. You know what I mean? So for more information, you can go to gctransit.com or call Gwinnett County Transit Services at 770-822-5010. Again, that number is 770-822-5010. Or just go to the website, www.gctransit.com. www.gctransit.com. If you're gonna get on the bus, put the mask on. If you're going to catch the bus, know that there only been 14 people on at a time. Yeah, so just know that as well. The, the Gwinnett County Board of Commissioners will launch, will launch a nine-month study to inventory and analyze housing countywide to help guide future decisions and policies. The study will review single-family and multifamily housing, the number of units available by category and condition, age, demographics, building materials, and types of ownership as well as redevelopment policy, displacement issues, and affordable housing. The goal of this study is to develop a better understanding of each of these areas so that county leadership can make appropriate decisions um, to meet the county's current and future needs in accordance to the according with the 2020-40 unified plan. Because, listen, right now we have 980,000 residents here in Gwinnett County. It's probably more than that. I think it's 980. And we're expected to get to... We're expecting to get to a million in the next few years. And I, and I believe that's going to happen because we're very close to that right now. Yeah, so the county will evaluate rapid growth, retirement of baby boom, baby boomers, increasing the number of small and non-traditional household economic trends, and shifting preferences. Um, housings are affecting demand in Gwinnett County. 
So, yeah, they're doing this study because they have a plan. You know what's crazy? Not crazy, but they have a plan that's stretched out to 2040. We're in 2020. So this is a 20-year plan. I've heard people who um, who have also planned out their family plan that way. Um, rich people. Yeah, rich people plan out like that. They plan out gen- five generations out. You know, that's that's something we need to be thinking about. You know what I mean? Like, these are the type of things, these are the legacy type of things that I think about. And although I get what's going on in the world is terrible, I have to try to stay focused on the big goal. Yeah. Anyway, that's the plan for that. 2040. That's 20 years out. That's not even far, though, when you think about it. It sounds far when you say 2040. But look how quick we got to 2020. I remember when it was just 2000. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Norcross uh, lead, led Gwinnett City is an estimated population of the last decade. See how fast it's growing? It's growing. If population estimates are any indication, Norcross has seen more growth in the last decade than any other city in Gwinnett County, according to the new data from the U.S. Census Bureau. That's why you had to do the Census the Bureau, because the Census, because it's count, it counts. The new city population data shows the estimated populations of each Gwinnett City as of July 19th, July 1st, 2019. It also lists populations of the cities um, on on um, April first and two two thousand ten, which official, which is the official two thousand ten census. Yep. So, yeah. One trend that would not shock Gwinnett residents is that every city that has at least partially in the county saw population increase, even Rest Haven, <laughs> whose population estimate was one. One person hired in 2010 census. So they, one person joined Rest Haven. Like, I didn't even know Rest Haven was a city. I was like, what is Rest? Because nobody talks about that. So I think it's a very, very small town in Gwinnett County. Like, because nobody ever talks about it. I hear it every now and then. And I was like, well, I was like, well, what is, because I, every time I look at the numbers, it's like 13 cities, but apparently there are three of them and Rest Haven is one. I don't know what the other two are. That's crazy, right? I need to know what they are, right? Because I don't even think... I got I got all the cities listed on my website. I don't think Rest Haven is up there. Yeah. But Norcross had the, the most population growth. So between 2000 and, and 2010 and 2019. To read more about that, you can go to Gwinnett Daily Post for more information about that and check it out. Auburn Police Auburn is hiring police officers. All right. They're offering a competitive salary, starting salary for new officers. The Auburn Police Department is looking for new police officers. Starting salaries begin at $38,996 with incentives for education and training. Benefits including a take-home vehicle, okay, health and dental and life insurance, as well as paid vacation and sick days. Applicants must submit um, to a complete background check, including work records, background and reputation, military service record, educational records, financial status, criminal history record, including any arrest records. To apply, you can print the application by going to tinyurl.com backslash APDA, APD application, which stands for Auburn Police Department application. Tinyurl, that's www.tinyurl.com backslash A as an Apple, P as in Peter, D as in David, application dot submit. All right, you want to go there, you can do that. Um, I mean, dot submit. Not dot submit. Tinyurl.com backslash APD application. Applications can be mailed to 1361 4th Avenue in Auburn, um, Georgia, 30011. Or you can deliver them in person to the same address. But remember, before you go, you know, you got to pass a lot of, they doing a lot of testing to make sure we, we get the good ones. Prayerfully, we get the good ones, y'all. That's, that's a prayer. That is a prayer that we get the good ones. I've seen the police department change people, though. I have. All right, listen, that's all I got for today. I'm going to go to my last song, and I'll be right back at this song to give you my inspiration for the day. Stay tuned. I know it don't show, but I'm falling. Cigarette smoke, sick from drinking. Baby, don't think I will save you. But I'll tell you the things we can do if you give in There is nothing to be broken In this moment Don't let me think back, give me what I need Just wanna forget, don't need time to breathe Two hearts pumping blood
Before I go, I want to give you my word of inspiration and because I want you to, you know, go for it today and think positive and do good things. So here it is. Even if I knew that tomorrow the world would go to pieces, I would still plant my apple tree. Mm, let me say that again. Even if I knew that tomorrow the world would go to pieces, I would still plant my apple tree. Dr. Martin Luther King said that and he was right. Because here's the thing. You know, prayerfully, we won't stay in this state where we are right now. <clears throat> and so don't give up hope is what he's saying. Don't give up hope. You know, I get on here sometimes and I ran and rave because there's some things that I'm truly passionate about. But I still hold on to hope every day. I still plant a tree every day. Matter of fact, I'm planting me a pomegranate tree because I like pomegranates. Um, so plant your apple tree, you know, and know that there is going to be a better tomorrow. We're going to come out this thing, all of it, better and stronger than we were before. But we have, to, we have to get out there. We have to vote. That's really important. The election is coming up on June 9th. Cast your vote. Vote for people that you know have your back. I know politicians, a lot of people don't trust them. They don't because they don't feel like they really have their back. But we got to vote. We know the ones who don't have our back. Vote them out. Let's give somebody else a chance. Listen, that's all I got for you today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last hour with me, and I appreciate you so much. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 o'clock to bring you more what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Remember, stay safe, you know, think about what's important, do what's important, right? Protect yourself, protect your family and your friends, and by, by all means, just just try to show some love and some compassion. That's all I got for you. I'll be back again tomorrow. If you missed any episode of the show, go to goodmorninggwinnett.com and listen to the past episodes there. If you like the show, be sure to share the show with your friends and follow me on Instagram at goodmorninggwinnett. Follow me on Facebook at Good Morning Gwinnett. Also follow me on Twitter at Facebook Gwinnett. I'll be back again tomorrow. Until next time, y'all, make it a great day. Bye now. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you missed an episode, go to www.goodmorninggwinnett.com to catch up. If you liked this episode, subscribe to the show now and share it with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit www.noisemedia.us.